Gorilla physics. Yeah. So this is a transistor. It's basically an electrical switch. So instead of being like an ordinary push switch, where you can complete the circuit by just pushing it closed, you have to have a small current in here to cause the current to flow from C to E. What do all these symbols mean? Well, C is the collector. That's where the current is coming in. B is the base current. So the base current allows the current to flow from C to E. And E is the emitter. Okay, that's where the current comes out. So this is actually Kirchhoff's first law. It's just a little bit of notation that you need to know that the current coming in at C has to add up with the current coming in at B to be the current coming in at E. Okay, that's Kirchhoff's first law. All the currents into a point equal all the currents out of the point. And that transistor's out of point. The transistor is the base of all computing. Okay, without a transistor we can't have computing. And they're actually manufactured, so they're about 50 atoms thick. Okay, which is quite small, isn't it, really? So what logic gates are, they're just combinations of transistors. So this, for example, is an AND gate, and it's two transistors in series. So if you think about what I said to you about how the transistor works, the base current, at A or B, has to be on for the output, the emitter, to be on. So because these are two in series, both A and B need to be on for the output to be on. So this is an AND gate, okay, I'm going to put a big potential difference across here and here and we're looking to see whether this light's going to turn on. These are our two inputs, A and B, and that is our output. So if the output's on, the LED is going to light up. Okay. So obviously red is positive, black is negative. So that is the kind of driving potential difference of the circuit if you look at the back here. All that circuitry is in parallel between that positive and that negative there. Okay, so at the minute, there's no current at A or B. So when I plug it in, well, the output is off. Okay, now let's try just plugging one in A. So, here to here. Let's have a look at the output now. Just one of them on. Nope. Still a zero output, still no output. Now, if I put then the second one in, B. Now A and B are on. Ah, and the output's on. So I hope you now understand what an AND gate is. It needs to have both A and B on. Yeah? So, um, in the first instance we had A off and B off, so the output was off. Second one we had A on but B off, and the output was still off. Then we had A off but B on, the output was off. But when both A and B were off, then the output was on. Yep. Okay, so the OR gate, well, it's the same but different. So I've got my driving current across here, my driving potential difference across here. And it's not on at the minute because both the inputs are off. I hope you kind of had a little think about what an OR gate might be and tried to work out how it might work. So now I'm going to plug A in. Yep. Now A is on, B is off, but the output is on. Let's see if I plug B in. Oh yeah, so A or B, it's the output is on. What if both of them are on? Yep, it's still on. A or B or both of them, you could say. All right, it's an OR gate. My camera is going to complete the output table for the OR gate. Sorry, not this one. OR. Okay, go camera. Hey, hang on. I don't write with my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, this is so. Hard. Yeah, so it's easy. So A or B or both of them, then the output is on. So what I don't have here is a NOT gate, but NOT gates are the easiest one really because they return whatever the input is NOT. So if the input was off then the output is going to be camera. On. And if the input is on then the, the output is going to be off. Okay, so it's very, very simple. And we combine those with AND gates and OR gates to make an, a 
an AND gate and a NOR gate. And you just have to remember these are the inverse of a AND and a an NOR. So this time they're both off the two inputs, so the output is on. One of them's on, one of them's off. Well, that's the opposite of an AND, isn't it? So they're both on. Sorry, the output is on. One of them's on, the output's on. Both of them are on. It's off. And that's exactly what you saw, obviously, on the logic gate. The NOR table is opposite to an OR, so in this case if both of them are off, it's on. If either of them are on, it's off. Or indeed, if both of them are on, it's off. Okay. So you have to remember the symbols because um, you're not always going to get told what they are. You're just going to be given a circuit diagram. This one is the first one we did. This is the AND gate. This is the OR gate. This is our NOT gate. And you can see the NAND is just like an AND, but with part of the NOT on the front there. Easy to remember. And the NOR, just like an OR, but with the little pip for the NOT on after as well. Okay. So this is a slightly more complex uh, system of logic gates, and you would be given an exam something like this, a half-filled table where you have to work out all of the outputs. So let's just go through. So P depends on A or B. That's an OR gate, wasn't it? So, are either of them on? No. Are either of them on? Yes. 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 So that's the first set of P. And actually the next one is the same. So just copy that down. Yep. Okay, then um, Q is a after a NOT gate. It's P, but after a NOT gate. So you just have to do everything that P is not. And then lastly, R is after an AND gate. So R is going to be on when Q and C are on. So which one's a C on? This one and here. So all of these are going to be off. And here C is off, Q is on, so this one is going to be off as well. Q is all off here, so these are all going to be Make sense, camera? Yep. Easy? Yep. Good. Thanks for watching this video from Gorilla Physics. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, why not go ahead and subscribe? I hope you found it useful, so please tell your friends, and every like and share that we get helps us be more useful to more people.